Well, hello, my friends. You know, Alfredo here, the Rebel Turner, of course. I cannot see myself, even though some people are getting a lot more views than I am by simply just putting it on and turning it. One of my good friends gets million views on his, his videos. <laughs> I mean, I gotta say, he does also awesome work. But he's straight to the point. He never talks. He just puts it on, does it, and voila. Anyway, I come to the shed with something in my mind that I think I want to turn. Then I get in here and I start looking around my woods and something screams out at you or oh, a topic that I think I should cover comes to focus and I that's what this video is about. Last week I showed you a very interesting piece that's kind of webby from a tree that I cut trimmed down in my yard which is that piece right there and that's going to go into the late but today at this moment it's not what I'm in the mood for and even though I said what I was going to make out of that I'm looking at it and I'm seeing different possibilities so that's still going to happen probably happen after what I want to discuss right now and that's how I am I am impulsive I do things that I think are what I feel like doing and not that it's going to be a sellable item or not that it's going to be a wow factor or anything like that just something that I think I need to portray and let you guys know and today is so you go through your pile of wood and you see nothing special but you have a piece that you really like because of the obvious spotting that it has and I look at this piece and one of the most interesting factors of this particular piece is the bark I would love to do something with maintaining the bark on this piece but upon examination I see that the bark is all separated let me let me uh, put, bring it towards the lathe so we can stop focusing and I'm going along as we discuss this so literally this bark is completely completely separated from this stump all the way through and that happens a little area right here it's solid over here solid over here and then the rest is all separated say well you know might as well take it all off right wrong so you do prep before you start turning it I know that this piece is going to be an amazing piece of oak with gorgeous spalting going through it and I look at the back side the back side is trash it's got a lot of checking in the pit which I don't mind at times but it's got all this fungus and stuff going through here so this will be the bottom of the bowl and some of this might show up on the bottom of the bowl now if I turned it this way and made this the top well I would be gouging all that up and I would not have any of the checking but the bark is somewhat chewed up it's not quite as interesting as this side so therefore it tells me that I want this to be the bottom I will be cutting some of this off so the checking will be minuscule and I will treat that checking once I get to that point so again this will be the bottom I will start this off between centers this way start chewing it up this way and then turn it around and hollow up the inside so the first thing I do yes you know I use a lot of CA and 
you know, some of you probably think, oh, you know, that's maybe cheat. I don't know. I don't know. Well, which, it depends on what you think of my usage of CA glue. I know what it does for me. That will assure me off the bat that I can maintain the spark. So I rubbed some uh, sawdust and pushed it in fairly hard, but I don't rely at this point that to be the holding or what's going to hold the spark together. But it will help because it will put some fibers at the very beginning of that area. And once you start cutting into it, I'm going to end up doing that again. So what I just did over here is most likely all going to be gone anyway. And here's a perfect case. This happens to be water oak. This was one of the first wood finds that I got. I, I, I said I was going to do this in reverse and I actually put it on backwards. I don't want to start with the inside. I want to start with the bottom. So I actually have to turn this around. But anyway, this was one of the first wood finds that I got after getting a lathe. Uh, it was a neighbor, not too far away. Was I heard? I didn't hear the the chainsaw. It, this one was a little further away than uh, than what I was just thinking. But anyway, I was driving around the neighborhood, and I saw somebody had quite a pile of wood in their front yard. They were cutting a huge oak tree, and. Uh, when I got it, I turned the first piece I turned out of it. I went to his house and as a thank you, gave him one of the pieces. But this water oak, oak uh, is pretty nice. I've turned some very nice pieces out of this. I'm going to set this up around 500 RPM and with my 5.8 Carl and Son bolt. That's almost 600 RPM. much for my attempt in keeping the bark on this one it I guess way too much separation now I know that I could very well still continue this turning but not post this video because it's not doing what I wanted to do but just because something doesn't do what you wanted to do does not mean that you should not continue turning or I should not show it to you. It can happen, but this with its natural state up on the top, even though it's not the bark, which was the feature that I was looking for, this is still an interesting piece. Okay. Seeing that what I wanted to gain out of this or get out of this piece was an end grain bowl with a beautiful bark that was present on this piece and that did not happen because the bark would did not hold on change of plans and again that's another topic that I will just lightly touch on don't be afraid to change your mind on something that you want to do the lathe is the perfect place for you to develop not only skills but uh, your art your visuals on what you can see or do
So this is going to be a side grain hollow vessel. And it won't be that big because the thickest it can be on its thickest point is this over here, which is about four inches wide. So <coughs> I'm going to start turning this from this side and create a shape. The mouth can be on either end, it doesn't matter. And this checking will show up true because I'm not going to take it all the way down. I want to maintain as much of the, uh, the wood that I have on this. So on a case like this, I want to make sure that I don't come from out here because this will start chipping away. I always come from inside out. Got that? And it's actually a little bit better balanced this way than it was the other way. So I'm actually going at uh, 960 RPM. I'm going to offset it a little bit, bring this side out a little bit so I can catch up to this a little bit. And uh, that way the bowl, the vase can be slightly longer. Now I only did the back side of that because that's where the, what I see as the problem on shape right now. So I'm going to go from in here again. Oh, am I still in the same area? Probably not. There we go.
close. I'm already outside of this, so just a little bit more, get rid of this and thin down the neck a little bit. And this will be, I'm going to make this the top. And it's going to be a, a nice little bottle. checking because this is side grain it would be easy for it to split off and I do, do not want to lose this I'm going to put some CA on this checking and stuff it up with sawdust there isn't enough gap for me to uh, put a color of epoxy for uh, you know on this if the gap was probably a little bit wider I'd probably do something like that, but it's a very small gap. All it needs is a little bit of sawdust in there. And that will hold it together. And this will be a beautiful, just beautiful wood grain throughout this whole piece. Any checking that you have on something like this, fill it up. It's easy enough to do and that will save you peace in the long run. It's time to make a tenon back here. And I don't know if it will be big enough for my Long reach jaws. If not, I'll use my uh, regular 50 millimeter.
time to apply noxious grit. Okay, the look that I'm going for on this, seeing that it does look ancient, and I don't want to go with a super high gloss on this finish. What I did is I left the lacquer on pretty heavy and let it tack up. And with the brush fairly dry, I gave it a stipple look. So the brush pretty dry though, not wet from the can, just stipple it up and that gives you a nice subtle finish. It's still well sealed, the effect that you get will be a very uniform look all the way through the piece, but stipply looking. As it tacks, so if you happen to go back and your brush is a little bit too wet and it's you lose that effect, don't worry about it. Just let it sit for a little while, work somewhere else on it, and uh, let it be drying up. As it's drying up and you come back and you start touching it, then you start getting the effect that you're looking for. The tackier it is, the more stiply look you get. And <clears throat> in the event that this is something that you think you're sorry you did or you don't like it for some reason, you can always fine sand it and give it that gloss look that you're looking for. When I use lacquer, I have a small brush and I cut it down specifically for it and I keep it right inside the can, close it up and it's good for the next time.
Well, here it is. Not a moment too soon. Got my stamp finished on the bottom, just like it does everywhere else. The checking that was on the pit, it's beautiful. I mean, it adds a lot to the piece. It's not a fix. It's not a mistake. It's an enhancement uh, in this particular case. And I had it here, and I had a little bit of checking up on the neck area as well. And all of this works in the favor of making it look like it was something of that sort. The top is still a natural edge. Uh, kept that part of it, did not flatten it up. It would have been easy enough if that's what I wanted to do. But I like this design. And what's this design? It's uh, somewhat like a bowling pin. Uh, but it's a design that you see on fine decor. And uh, I like the piece. I hope you do too. Well, thanks for watching. And we'll see you very soon. Don't forget to like, share it with your friends. That helps me out a great deal. And leave a comment below. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.